Welcome back to our cottage garden. It's finally March now, which is wonderful because it means things are just going to get better and better over the next few months and the next few videos. But um, it's been a very wet March here. We've had so much rain. Um, things have become very muddy and the delicate little bulbs that have been flowering have been battered by the rain and that's been quite tricky. It's also been really mild so we had a lot of crocuses that flowered early and then because they got rained on they didn't last very long and we didn't have an awful lot of time to enjoy them which was a shame but now we've got a few days of sunshine which has been amazing, such a welcome sight and you can see behind me that our crocuses are making the most of it and flowering and with this lovely sunshine they're opening their petals nice and wide. Um, it's been a really busy month and you can tell it's going to be a bit of a jam-packed video when I've got a notebook with me because I can't remember everything that I want to tell you um, off by heart. So I've written down what we've been up to um, but it's been amazing, we've got loads of things to share with you. So to give you an idea of what we're going to be showing you in today's video, we've obviously got the crocuses behind me which we will be sharing with you and any other spring bulbs that have been flowering. We've got some gorgeous new hellebores that we've added to the garden and I'm so excited to show you those, they are stunning. Um, we've also been doing some willow weaving, so we've got some new hurdles around the garden. Um, that's been really fun to learn. And Waylon, our duck, has been quite poorly, so we've got his journey to share with you as well. Then finally, I'm doing a bit of seed sowing. So let's get started with the crocus lawn and make sure you like, comment and subscribe if you enjoy these videos because it really helps the channel. Currently our crocus lawn is in flower. I don't think it's quite at its peak. I think I would give it perhaps another week or so, but there's quite a lot of action going on behind us and the bees have really been loving it, especially in the sunshine. So those of you that have subscribed for a while will know most of this already, but for anyone that's new, I will outline the lawn and how we care for it. So in this bit of the garden, we grow pickwick crocuses and these are naturalized in the grass, which means they should come back every year and spread eventually. So I think I started this about four years ago and initially I put somewhere between 600 and 800 bulbs in the grass and I did this one by one with a bulb planter and it took quite a long time and hurt my back but it was really really worth it in that first spring when we saw them flowering. I've topped them up a couple of times in the years since then so I think now there's probably about maybe 1,500 bulbs in the grass and I think it probably could use a few more. There's still a couple of areas that are a little bit patchy. So last autumn I went in with a spade and dug up big patches at a time and filled these with bulbs and then put the turf back. So where you see really dense patches, um, that's where I've done that. And they look a little bit too neat at the moment, but they will soften over the years as the bulbs sort of spread a little bit. We don't do an awful lot to look after them, to be honest. Once they're in the ground, we just leave them to live out their natural life cycle, which means we don't mow the lawn so that the leaves can get really big, they can photosynthesize and they will feed the bulbs in the ground. That makes sure that next year's display is even bigger and better than this year's. We're really lucky in this garden in that we don't have many pests. I know a lot of you have written to me and said that you do try to grow crocuses but there are things in the garden that will eat them or dig them out, maybe squirrels or deer and um, we're really lucky. The only pest that we have to deal with is rabbits and so far this year we haven't had any so keep your fingers crossed but last year we did struggle a lot with rabbit damage. The most incredible thing about this crocus lawn though is watching the bees especially on a sunny day and it's not just bees there's beetles um, tiny pollinators I don't know the most about insects and I can't recognize every single one but there's definitely about 
five or six different types of bees that use these at the moment and other pollinating insects as well. And sometimes you'll find that the bees, when they have a rest, they'll curl up inside the crocuses and it is the cutest thing ever. It's so nice to watch. So I do try and come out here with a cup of tea when it's warm enough and just sit here and watch the bees and enjoy the colours. As well as the purple crocuses down here that I grow, I also grow a white variety in the grass at the top of the garden. And these flowered so early this year. It was middle of February, I think, but it was so rainy. We really didn't get to see a lot of those, but I think I've maybe put about 500 of those in. And similar to these, they are a Dutch variety of crocus. So they have really big petals compared to the species crocuses, which are very small and dainty. Um, so they're quite showy and they look gorgeous when the sun shines through the petals. But unfortunately, we didn't have a lot of time with them this year. I think I had one afternoon where I got to properly enjoy them, but it was still really beautiful. The crocus lawn does look a little bit scattered. You can see in some parts of the garden that the leaves have got really big and the flowers have finished, whereas in other areas it's only flowers at the moment. And partly this is just due to the way that the light moves around the garden. Um, some parts get more sunshine than others so that's part of it and then another part is because I did such a big effort topping the bulbs up in the autumn and I did this in a really staggered way I wasn't organized at all so some bulbs went in really early and others went in really late and that's affected their flowering time so the plus side of that is although it doesn't look very even we will have a really long display of flowers because some of them haven't even come up at all yet and I think they'll be a bit late this year but hopefully then when we get around to next year we'll have more bulbs and they'll all come up at once and it will look really lovely so it's always a work in progress but I have absolutely loved seeing them this year and the crocuses for me they feel like a big sign that spring is returning and it's like a weight off my shoulders and the garden is gonna just get better and better from this time onwards So if you watched our February garden tour, you will remember that this bed is where I grow most of my hellebores and my snowdrops. And as you can see, lots of them have finished now and they're going over and they've got kind of strange looking seed heads on. There's a few flowers left, which are really, really lovely. Um, but I have topped this bed up with quite a few new plants. So this one here, this is a new one. And although they're going over now, um, I was able to film some of these when they arrived. So I think we got about 13 new plants and these are from Ashwood Nurseries, which are hellebore specialists. And they're the only nursery that sell an evolution variety of hellebore. Um, and the evolution ones are stunning. They are a bit more pricey, but really worth the money if you can afford a nice treat. Um, so they have more of a yellow kind of foliage. Um, you can see a few of them around me are a good example. This one it's a really kind of pale yellowy green color compared to some of the other hellebores. Um, they're a hybrid, so you get quite a long flowering season out of them and they are quite upright, so you can enjoy the flowers more easily than the varieties that droop over and you have to lift the flowers up. So I've added all of the, ev the new evolution varieties to this border and just because it's near the house, that means I'll be able to enjoy them more easily when I look out the window, as opposed to planting them really far away where I'm not gonna see them a lot in winter. Um, but they are absolutely stunning. And I chose for varieties with kind of neon colors, pink colors, peachy colors, because I think they're really interesting and a little bit unusual. Um, so when this all flowers synchronized with each other, it should be amazing. And like a really kind of mix of pastel warm sunshine colors. So I can't wait to see that next year. The plants that I couldn't fit into this bed, I've just dotted around in other bits of the garden. And lots of those are still flowering now. So there is still time to enjoy hellebores. Outside of the evolution hellebores though, I bought some double petaled varieties, which we actually don't have any of um, until I made this order, which was kind of surprising. So we've got some really lovely pink double petaled varieties, some white double petaled varieties, and lots of hellebores with the nice speckly petals. And I am so excited to grow these in the garden. Um, but let me know if you grow hellebores in your garden and if you've got a favorite variety to grow, please do share, I'd love to hear about it. And then around these, you can see there's clumps of snowdrops that have finished flowering now. So I have lifted some of these and then divided them just to give us more even coverage. So this is another part of the garden that's just gonna get better and better with each year as these hellebore plants get bigger and the snowdrops keep spreading and I continue to divide them. But next, let's go and check on the ducks. Hi 
Hi, boy. You gonna come out? Come on, babes. Oh. Um, I thought I would give you a duck update because poor little Waylon has been quite unwell um, and he's actually had a tiny bit of surgery on his foot this week. Um, so you can see he's got a shoe made for him, which we're going to have changed tomorrow and have him um, checked by the vet. But um, sadly, two of the ducks got attacked and Coco was also attacked, but she made a really quick recovery, whereas Waylon got an infection in his foot that turned quite nasty. So he's needed a lot of help from the vets and he's having antibiotics and anti-inflammatories twice a day um, and lots of care and cuddles from us. So um, please wish him a speedy recovery. Um, but I really, really hope that he can get over the infection because it's been really, really sad seeing him um, not able to walk properly and in a bit of pain. Um, so thankfully the medication seems to be helping, but um, fingers crossed. And now let's move up the garden and I can show you something new. So around me here, you can see that we've been doing a bit of willow weaving this month and I've really, really enjoyed doing this. Um, so initially I built one hurdle as a practice down by the ducks and the purpose of the hurdle is to stop the dogs from getting up the garden and getting in the way of the ducks really. Um, and I did have some old bamboo there before, but it just didn't look very nice and replacing it with willow looks a lot nicer but it was a really enjoyable process as well. In one of our recent videos I asked you guys if you think we should do some willow um, edging around this border here and lots of you were keen and I'm really glad that you encouraged me to because now that we've done it I absolutely love it. Um, so we have a willow farm not too far from here in Somerset and um, we were able to order some of their willow while it's soft so you don't need to soak it before you weave with it and it's quite thick so you wouldn't use this kind of willow for doing small things like bath but for hurdles and fences it's perfect. Um, so me and Aaron did this together and we made the stakes by cutting down some of our hazel trees at the top of the garden and they needed coppicing this time of year anyway so it worked out really well. And then we hammered those into the soil and wove the willow canes around it. And it's not in any particular pattern because we're not experts on this at all. This is our first time we've really tried using willow. And I think it took us a little while to kind of get into the swing of it and figure out what our rhythm is. So if you look really closely at this edging, you can see that we did different patterns in different places while we were learning. And I actually really like that. I think it shows a bit of the process for us. And it's one of those things that might technically be a little bit messier, but it shows part of the story and makes it quite personable. So the actual process of weaving was really quite simple. You just go under and over and under and over with the canes. And then once you've done one cane, you move on to the next stake and you go under and over and under and over. Then you move on to the next one and then you start again until you've completely built up the hurdle. The purpose of this really is just to look nice, but it will be helpful in keeping the ducks off the tulips in spring, because if you keep ducks, you will know that they do flatten anything delicate. And I grow a lot of tulips in these borders and things that I would prefer to keep upright. We still have loads of willow left. So I think I will do some more of this on the other side. And then I also used some of the canes to build a rough kind of wall around my mini meadow in front of me. And again, the purpose of this is to keep the ducks off of the mini meadow um, because they do love to run through it and to flatten things. Um, but looking at this, I am so excited to see how this flowers probably around April time. So do stay tuned for our next tour. Um, we've got plenty of fritillaries coming up now that look like they want to flower quite soon actually it might even be before April um, we've got loads of daffodils and in theory there should be some woodland anemones in here I'm not seeing any quite yet but fingers crossed that they emerge um, but compared to last year there's so much more foliage already so I think we'll get a really good display out of this this year you can also see a few other signs of spring around the garden like the hellebores next to me still look quite beautiful they are turning into seed heads now um, but there's a couple of flowers on those and this is another of the borders that i topped up when we got our big delivery of hellebores so again next year hellebore display here should be even better and then behind me in the big greenhouse you can see that there's blossom on our peach tree which is really exciting it's a very young tree i think it's maybe just two years old now, um, but it looks so beautiful when it flowers and it's slightly earlier because it is really warm in that greenhouse. 
And then when it comes to thinking about the garden year ahead, a lot of people have started their seed sowing efforts. And I've told you in my last couple of videos, I'm really quite behind and disorganized and I'm fine with that. I think this year I'm just going to be a little bit scatty when it comes to seed sowing. But yesterday I finally started my tomatoes, which actually is really late for me. I like to start my tomatoes in February in the house, but things were just too chaotic this year and I thought I will work more closely to kind of the patterns of nature and sow things when the garden starts to warm up a bit anyway and it's less of an adjustment for the seedlings if they're sown in a warmer environment. Um, so I have sown I think three types of cherry tomato, two types of beef steak tomato and then just a normal kind of tomato. We'll see what does well. Um, last year I sowed a few different varieties and one of them thrived compared to the others um, so it's always interesting to see what you get and those are on heated propagators just so that they can have enough warmth to germinate while it is still quite cold and then I've started a few random other seedlings as well um, in the shed where it is nice and warm. I've got a few marigolds, some brussels sprouts, a few brassicas, um, odd bits here and there but I am basically just trying to use up my stored seeds um, and then next year I'll buy a big new batch because it does feel quite wasteful to keep buying loads each year and I've got loads lying around in there that I'm, I need to use up so that's my plan with seeds this year and I think when it comes to growing food I absolutely love growing tomatoes and they are the most important thing for me to want to grow in the garden so if I could only grow one thing it would definitely be tomatoes and the fact that I've got those sown now makes me feel like a good weight off my shoulder and another thing to look forward to. Let me know how your efforts are going with seed sowing. Are you sowing any this year? Are you behind as well? Um, do share how it's going. And we're up in the veg garden now to show you some of the things that are coming up. Um, so you can see in the bed next to me, we've got these lovely perennial onions and these are one of my favorite things to grow. I love these. Um, they've got some beautiful new shoots on the top there, which we can eat like spring onions. Um, we've got a few chives and then behind me all the garlics coming up now, which is amazing. So that's elephant garlic. I always grow elephant garlic. I absolutely love it. The size of the bulbs is incredible um, and then behind that our daffodils are starting to flower quite early for them I would say um, these are a variety called ice follies and they are looking on the sadder side because we had quite a bit of snow last week that has um, pressed the flowers down a little bit and um, damaged the stems so they're not nice and upright like they usually are but it's good to see them flowering nonetheless so there's lots to look forward to up here um, and on the theme of things to look forward to soon we'll be having our tulips flower as well so we can look forward to those I'll be hopefully getting a little bit more organized and sowing some more seeds and a really exciting thing is that I'm going to be appearing on ITV's Alan Titchmarsh's Gardening Club so look out for that in April I will let you know when I know exactly the dates um, that I'm going to be on the program but I think it will be a few episodes and I will keep you posted thank you so much for watching I hope you've enjoyed having a look around today and be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see our garden and develop over the months and years and we'll see you next month.